is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? This has been a round of the century. I was not supposed to win this. So, now you guys are listening because we did win. And I can glorify God the way I want to glorify him. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Um, great weekend of boxing on Friday, Saturday. I mean, it was really, really good. There are about five cards on, um, including the new Pro Box series. I mean, really good stuff this weekend. A, a really loaded weekend of boxing. I didn't even get to watch basketball. We're going to get into David Benavidez, kind of the storyline of the week and his destruction of David Lemieux, who I've never thought was any good. Uh, before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, or all forms of social media. Quick hits comes up to you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Also, uh, please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scenes, completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. All right, so please like, share, and subscribe to that channel as well. Help show support for a charity that's near and dear, from the nation that's near and dear to our heart. Um, Okay, guys, let's get into David Benavides. Um, first of all, I, masterful performance, a a plus performance. Not that you can criticize about the performance. He took on an overmatched guy, absolutely blew him out, rocked him with a left hook in the first round, nearly stopped him. Harvey Dot was the referee out in um, Arizona, and kudos to them for bringing in a good ref. Um, <clears throat> if you remember, Bam Rodriguez for um, uh, uh, um. Why is my brain not working? Bam Rodriguez um, fought out in, in Arizona when, when he won his, his uh, belt. Guys, my brain. Um, who did Bam Rod- I got to look it up now. Um, I can't remember the name at all. Uh, Carlos Quadras. <laughs> Sorry, guys. When Bam Rodriguez fought Carlos Quadras, that was out in Arizona. Um and the, the whole card, the officiating, the commission was pretty awful. Um, so Arizona did the right thing. Um, I don't know if it was WBC or Arizona, but bringing in a, a, an experienced ref in Harvey Dock from New York to to ref the main event. Did a fine job. I uh, stopped the fight at the right point. Um, like I said, almost stopped in the first round. It looked like he was just like one or two punches away from stepping in. The bell rung to save Lemieux. So great job there uh, by Harvey Dock. Um, and then he took care of business. I mean, it was an absolutely masterful performance. Uh, he dropped, better he just dropped him in the second round. Um, almost stopped him again in the second round. They should have really, the corner should have really stopped the fight in the second round. And then in the third round, um, I mean, he just blew him out and uh, sealed the deal. Uh, I had 2016, as did Chris Flores. The other two judges, uh, Javier Alvarez and Tim Chain, did not score the first round 10-8. I scored both rounds 10-8, something of note there. Um, but this was, I mean, this was a masterful performance by, by Benavides. There's nothing really you can criticize. Like I said, it's an A+. Plus. You hand this in, you get an A+. Plus. There's, nothing, there's nothing you can criticize about this performance. The one thing I, I, I would note is that... Um, David Lemieux is a guy that was touted. He was really touted on the way up. Um, I, I've never thought he was good. Um, he got destroyed by Billy Joe Sa- Saunders, outclassed by Billy Joe Saunders. He got destroyed by Triple G. Um, he lost every moment of the fight to Triple G, who got him out in eight. And you go all the way back early in his career. He lost back-to-back fights really, really early in his career. He lost to Marco Antonio Rubio in Montreal on um, – Friday Night Fights on ESPN back in 2011. This one, he was, you know, he's supposed to be the next great thing. Uh, it was called that, interestingly enough, also featured Adonis Steven and Oscar Rivas. So pretty good card. But Lemieux was fighting Marco Antonio Rubio, which was supposed to be a step up fight, and Rubio destroyed him. And I think Rubio is a better fighter than Lemieux ever was. And then he came back um, later that year, probably uh, December of that year, I'm looking up right now, and he lost to uh, Joaquim Alcine, um, another veteran who didn't really go on. Um, to have that much success. Um, actually, after that fight, he really didn't win any more fights. I'm looking at this now. Okay, he beat Lemieux in 2011, lost to Matthew Macklin, stopped by Matthew Macklin in the first round, lost to Brian Rose, stopped in the 12th round. Uh, UD lost to uh, Julian Williams, lost to Omar Chavez, 
Lost to Francisco Santana. Beat a guy, Lawrence Hughes, who's four and seven. Uh, then beat a guy, Jovan Ramirez. Then got a split decision with Delvin Rodriguez. And then got destroyed by Jamel Chawl. So he never really went on to success after that. And these are guys that beat uh, David Lemieux. I've never been impressed by Lemieux. They tried to hype me on Lemieux for so long, for so many times. I've never seen anything in David Lemieux. Yes, he can crack. Uh, but everything is wide. He's not super athletic. He's not fast. He doesn't really have the ability to slip inside and get in the inside. He's only 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine as a super middleweight, is not great size. Like I said, he's not big for the weight class. He's not strong for the weight class. He doesn't really have the ability to get inside. He's not. He doesn't have a great jet. There's nothing he does to really deliver that power. Um, Pascal, we saw a fight this weekend, too. And, and you know, they're both from Montreal, or I think they're from Quebec. Um and they're similar, but Pascal is just a lot quicker and a lot more athletic. Uh, but they, they they fight in a similar style. I just don't think it's a, it's a similar style. Uh, it's a style that, you know, pans out well at the highest level. I, I don't think you can just rely on throwing wide shots like Lemieux does and thinking you're going to beat world-class fighters. You know, um, the, there's nothing really to back it up with Pascal. He's got the blazing speed. He's hyper athletic. Lemieux doesn't have any of that, right? Like he's just a, a guy that swings and has pop, right? And then you see what happens when he fights somebody's somebody's somebody good. He either gets taken apart at the hinges like Billy Joe Saunders and J Rock did, or he gets obliterated by a guy who can punch like Golovkin and and, um, and now Benavides. Uh, I, I do think that is basically the end of the line for Benavides, but it is not. I mean, it's the end of the line. I, I, I'm struggling, guys. It is the end of the line for David Lemieux. It's not the end of the line for David Benavides, who is just entering his prime now. And, you know, I don't know what division we want to call Canelo. Um, if we call him a light heavyweight, uh, David Benavides is the best light, is the best super middleweight in the world. If you're going to bring Canelo back down to 68, boy, we got a good fight there. And I'm not going to go all in and say he definitely beats Canelo, but that is a great fight there. He can box Canelo from the outside. He's not going to go in retreat, and I said that's not the way to fight Canelo. You don't fight Canelo in retreat. You have to stand up to him. Benavides can stand up to him. Benavides can push him backwards. Now, what happens when someone pushes Canelo backwards? I um, mean, he can fight with Canelo on the inside. Benavides is so gifted. He's gifted on the inside. He's gifted on the outside. He's such a highly, highly talented fighter. Um, you know, he just looks like this big slug. He just, he's not slow. You know, I'm not saying he's blazing fast, right? But he's not slow. Um, he's not sloppy. He, he's he's sound. He's good. He's strong. Um, he puts his punches together well. He mix, mixes up head and body really well. He got he's got a good jab. He sets things up. He's going to be really really tough. Um, I I think he beats Caleb Plant. I think he beats Jamal Jamal Charles. If Charles would come up, yeah, Andre's going to be at the division. He definitely beats Andre. This is like if he stays at 68, it's him and Canelo. Um, and I'm not going to go all in and say he beats Canelo just yet, but he's getting there. He's a couple of fights away from being a pound for pound guy. Um, the, the skills and the strength and, and, and the power is all there. I mean, this is a tough guy to deal with. Uh, so like I said, it's an A plus performance from Benavides. I just wish, um, you know, and I, look, I, I understand there's attraction to Lemieux. People like Lemieux. For some reason, people think he's good. I've never seen it in Lemieux. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Were you impressed by Lemieux? Do you think he's ready for Canelo? Would Canelo wash him? Would he stop? But leave your thoughts, comments below. Please let me know what you guys think. Um, Texas Box. Uh, I'm sorry. 3D Boxing Blog comes at you every day, 8 to day. Keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Please like, share, and subscribe. 3D Boxing Blog on all forms of social media. Also, please subscribe to Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Texas Boxing Scene. Um, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is May 22nd, uh, 2022. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.